Welcome, I'm Robert Breaker, and I have a friend here named Jason. And Jason came all the way from Australia to visit me. And Jason is a viewer of mine on YouTube. Say hi, Jason. Hey, Hello. Hey, man. Jason watches a lot of my videos, and he's just he's happy about the truth and the teaching and the doctrine from the Bible that I give. And uh, Jason also watches a lot of other people's videos as well. And Jason has told me that there's some people out there that are making videos about Robert Breaker. And uh, shocker, I didn't realize some of the things that they said about me. And it's like, wow, okay. So Jason has informed me some of the things that, that they say that Robert Breaker preaches. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know I preached that. <laughs> so what I thought I'd do today, Jason encouraged me to make this video. And uh, I was like, ah, I don't really. But he said, please, please. So Jason, I appreciate you. Thank yep. you. What I'm going to do today is I'm just going to, because Jason wants me to, amen, just address a couple of things that people are saying about me that aren't true. And it's just amazing to me how people can say, Robert Breaker believes this. And it's like, have you ever watched my videos? And if you watch my videos, you'll I make no apologies for it, you'll see that I went to a uh, certain Bible school and I had a certain pastor that was my pastor, Dr. Peter Ruckman. And uh, he's my pastor. And it's funny that Jason has told me there's a lot of people that claim to be Bible believers and followers of Ruckman, and yet they attack Robert Breaker. And then I look at what they claim to attack me on, and it's exactly what Peter Ruckman believes. And I wonder, why don't they attack Peter Ruckman? So here I am in front of my bookshelf, and let me pull down a book from off of my bookshelf. Oh, there it is, the Book of Romans by Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. And here it is, uh, Book of Romans by Peter Ruckman. One of the things that Jason showed me is that there are people making videos and saying that Robert Breaker is against prayer. <laughs> and they say Robert Breaker believes you don't have to pray to be saved, and they teach that he is against prayer. And they think that's so silly and so evil and so wicked. And I'm like, well, yeah, what does the Bible say? So I've given many, many videos about what the Bible says, but many of those same men claim to be followers of, of the man who was my mentor, if you will, the teacher at the Bible school, Dr. Peter Ruckman. And they claim to be Ruckmanites. So I thought what I'd do, just quickly, is tell you my position. I don't believe that you're saved by a prayer. But I'm not against prayer at all, ever. I've known many people that got saved when they pray. I believe you can get saved when you pray, but it is not the prayer itself from the mouth that saves you. And you know why I believe that? Because, number one, the Bible teaches that, but also because that's what this guy <laughs> used to teach. And I just thought, wouldn't it be interesting to show you? Uh, and this is for all those people out there that want to attack Robert Breaker. And let me tell you who they are and what they do. I'm not going to mention their names, but those people that attack Robert Breaker, they are people that believe that salvation is with the mouth. And they say, you must say such and such with your mouth or you're not saved. And I guess that's the issue. That's the question. Are we saved by what we say with our mouth? Well, I believe that we're saved when we trust from the gospel, trust the gospel from the heart. Salvation is by believing, grace through faith. And you believe from the heart in the blood atonement of Christ in the gospel, and that's when you're saved. So it's not what you say with the mouth that saves you. Sure, you can pray, but the salvation comes dependent on whether or not you've believed from the heart. Now let me, uh, let me show you that. <laughs> Here's Dr. Ruckman's book. Here's page 404. Alright, it says here. Now there are, there are two things that, one, that come up at this point. The first is the place of prayer and salvation. It is obvious that the mere act of praying itself saves no one. What? Many people today say, the prayer saves, the prayer saves, what you say with your mouth is what saves. Well, that's not what he taught. And yet they claim to be followers of him. Continues here, Cornelius prayed on a regular basis and God honored his prayers. But it says, but Cornelius did not get saved until he heard Peter preach and he believed on Christ. Oh, so believing is what saves you. I've always taught because the Bible says that you're saved after you hear the preaching of the gospel. You can't get saved by just doing something with your mouth. You're saved when you believe from the heart in the gospel, but you've got to hear the gospel. Like it says in, a, in Ephesians 1.13, you know, whom you've also, after you heard the word of truth, you've trusted. After you heard the word of truth, you've trusted the gospel. So, here we are on page 404. Now look at the very next page, 405. Peter Ruckman says, so prayer in and of itself doesn't save you. Yet these people say, yes, prayer saves you. 
So why are they out there saying prayer saves you and preaching against Robert Breaker and saying, Robert Breaker, you're wrong because you're saved by the prayer, and yet they're claiming to be followers of Ruckman, and Peter Ruckman says the prayer itself does not save you. Now, Ruckman continues here by saying, realizing this, what, what do we realize? That prayer doesn't save you. There's a new group of heretics, in this case Bible-believing Baptists, have come up saying that if a man pray to get saved, or more importantly, specifically prays the sinner's prayer, then he is lost. Now, you know, I've never said that. I've said a person can get saved when they pray the sinner's prayer. And if they believe the gospel the moment they pray that prayer, then they're saved. But what I'm very much against is telling person that it's the prayer, the, the, the prayer itself that saves. And that's what I've tried to always distinguish. Now, I know who he's talking about, these people. They're from Milton, Florida. They have a, a certain radio station here in town. I know who he's talking about. And uh, I'm not a part of that group, nor do I want to be. Amen? But uh, I've known some of them, and they're not against prayer. What they're against is telling someone that the prayer saves you. So here we are on page 406. Look at what Peter Ruckman says. He says here on page 406, I want you to see this. There is nothing in the scriptures, including here at Romans 10, 9, and 10, and 9, uh, 10, 13, that says you have to pray to get saved. Yet these people that make videos on YouTube about Robert Breaker, they say, you're a heretic because you have to say a prayer to get saved. But, but he says, there's nothing in the scriptures, including Romans 10, 9, and 10, or 13, that says you have to pray to get saved. Makes you wonder who the heretic is, doesn't it? You know, they want to call me a heretic, and they claim to follow this guy, and this guy is saying, nowhere in the Bible says you have to pray to get saved. But yet, then he says this, and I'm in total agreement with what he says, a little lower down. At the same time, though, you can't say it is wrong to, get, to pray. So it's not wrong to pray to get saved. It's not wrong for a person to pray. But the prayer is not what saves them. It's the faith from the heart. And if a person's believing in the gospel from the heart, then they're saved. Uh, here he says here, prayer is a form of calling upon the Lord, page 407. But then he says, it isn't his prayer that saves him anyway. Who are these people that say that a prayer saves? It's practically speaking, it's good for a sinner to pray. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not against prayer. Never have been, never will be. I've got a video on YouTube entitled, um, How to Pray. <laughs> So it's interesting, I didn't realize, and uh, I'm glad for Jason telling me, that there are all these people are out there saying, Robert Breaker believes that you don't have to pray to get saved. Well, I personally didn't say a prayer when I got saved. And uh, Mr. Ruckman says you, you don't have to pray to get saved. But he says it's not bad. And I say it's not bad either. I think someone can get saved when they pray, but the prayer itself isn't what saves them. What the Bible teaches is you're saved when you trust the blood. Let me show you what Peter Ruckman says. Let's just look at his words. Um, you know, a lot of people, you go show them a Bible verse and it's not enough for them. But you get a chance to look at Romans 3.25. Here's uh, the commentary on Romans by Peter Ruckman. Right here, page 142. You appropriate that satisfaction when you trust His blood atonement for you. Then trust Christ and His shed blood. All through his book, Dr. Ruckman is telling you that salvation is by trusting in the blood. Here's page 213. So the scriptures say that we are justified by the grace of God, we are justified by our faith, and we are justified by the blood of Christ. But the word justification is much more specific. Justification in scriptures is by God's grace, by our faith in Jesus Christ and His atoning work, and by the actual blood of Jesus Christ, and never by water. <laughs> so, Peter as Ruckman was a great Bible teacher. He knew the Bible, and he preached what the Bible says, and he told people that salvation is by trusting the blood atonement, whether you say a prayer or not. It's not whether or not you said the prayer, it's whether or not you have trusted the blood to save you. And I'm sure there's a lot more quotes that I could go into here and show you from this book. Let me show you one more quickly I just found, 214. Here's Peter Ruckman, and this sounds a lot like Robert Breaker, if you listen to my preaching. <laughs> it says here, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, it says, and placed your faith in His blood atonement on the cross, you were saved. So how are you saved? I guess someone has made this into an issue. And many people say, you're saved by your mouth, and it's what you say with your mouth that saves you. Well, that's wonderful, but what if you pray with your mouth without believing from the heart in the blood atonement of Christ? According to Peter Ruckman, you're not even saved. 
What must take place for a person to get saved? They must, by faith, believe in the gospel, which is what? The blood atonement of Christ. And when you believe is when you save. That might take place the very moment you pray. Or you might get saved by believing the gospel and you didn't even utter a prayer. The Bible says confession is made unto salvation. What is confession? Confession is what you do after the fact. Confession is saying, I'm saved. It wasn't what I said with my mouth, the confession that saved me. I already got saved when I believed. I was just saying with my mouth that I have believed. So it's not the mouth that saves. I don't know why so many people want to believe that you're saved by what you say with your mouth. But God is looking at the heart. And God is saying, hey, have you believed from the heart? Another place I don't have time to show you. I have a letter from Peter Ruckman where he says, A person's prayer doesn't amount to a hill of beans until he sees his own self-righteousness can't save him. Sure, a guy can pray with the mouth, but that's not what saves us. It's faith from the heart in the finished work of Christ, the blood atonement of Jesus. So there's the answer to all my, I guess, critics. Come on in, Jason, one more time. And all the people that, that say Robert Breaker's a heretic and he's a liar because he's against prayer. Jason, am I against prayer? No. Did you ever, in watching all of my videos, did you ever think that I ever was against prayer? No. So why do these people think that? What do my videos teach? That salvation is by what? The blood atonement. Blood of Jesus. And you knew that before we came over and talked, didn't you? Yep. You just wanted to tell me about that. Yes. Well, I appreciate you informing me about people saying something wrong <laughs> and saying that it's the mouth that saves. I don't know why they say that. But I'm glad you showed me. There was probably, what, five, six, seven videos or something like that of yes. people attacking Robert Breaker. And they claim to be Bible believers who followed Peter Ruckman. And they say Robert Breaker's a heretic because he says you're not saved by your prayer. And yet, Peter S. Ruckman says, you're not saved by your prayer. It's not the prayer itself that saves you. So thank you again, Jason. I'm so glad you came to visit and encouraged me to make this video. Let's hope it's a blessing to some people. And uh, one thing I wanted to, oh, I've been telling you that this whole time you've been here, and you've seen it yourself. People call me all the time and say, Brother Breaker, we appreciate you for preaching the gospel and standing strong on the blood atonement of Christ because they've gotten saved through watching my videos. Yes. Can you just tell them uh, what you saw being here with me for what, two days? When I've been here yesterday and to, to, to today, at least a few calls a day. From people? Yep. Who, what were they saying? Because I um, let you listen. Um, they, they said they got saved by, by watching Rob's uh, video. Wow, yep. what a blessing. Yep. And what, what did they say about they were confused before, right? What um, were they confused um, by? Because, because, because they thought, uh, because they said the prayer, that's what saves them when, when trusting you in what Jesus did. So they were confused body. into literally thinking that the prayer itself saved them. And they didn't realize, no, it's the blood atonement that saves you. Like the Bible says and like Mr. Ruckman said as well. So, Jason, thank you for that. I, I wasn't even going to make a video about this, but Jason kept saying, you've got to show the truth. You've got to show the truth in your Australian accent. Yes. So thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. And I hope this is a blessing to all of you. I hope it helps clear up any confusion. My, my father used to always say there's simply no substitute for clear and effective communication. And what we need to do is we need to communicate effectively and clearly and clearly show what the Bible says. And also... Let's not have any confusion. Let's look at other men of the past, good Bible-believing teachers. What do they say about it? <laughs> and I hope this settles the matter. It's not the prayer that saves. It's when you believe the gospel. Yep. But you know what? You can believe the gospel when you pray. The very yep. moment you pray, that can take place as well. But if that doesn't take place and all you did was pray with the mouth, You're that's lost. what? You're lost. I didn't say it. Jason said it. You're lost. Because all you've done is a, is a religious prayer with your mouth, but it's the faith from the heart that saves. Yes. All right, Jason, I appreciate you. Thank you, everybody out on YouTube. Say goodbye, Jason. Bye. All right, God, God bless you all. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time with more sermons on, on YouTube. And go to thecloudchurch.org. And every week I've got a new sermon in English and Spanish just trying to give you what the Bible says about it. Amen. God bless. Yep.